Hey guys, welcome back. It's me, Sal Mahajan. And in today's video, we're going to take a look into RDS. So RDS basically stands for Relational Database System. So let's dive right into the video. So again, RDS stands for Relational Databases. It basically consists of rows and columns. You can think of an RDS as an Excel sheet, wherein you have various different rows and columns wherein data is stored. Um, RDS, there are various different engines out there, database engines out there where you can create a relational database. A few prominent and famous ones are the SQL Server by Microsoft. You have PostgreSQL, Oracle, MySQL, and Amazon Aurora. I'm pretty sure most of you would have heard about these four databases, but many of you would have not heard about Amazon Aurora. And Amazon Aurora is basically an AWS created database. It is not an open source database. It's completely created and managed by AWS. So moving on, let's talk about a couple of advantages on you know why should you host your relational database in the cloud? And to be more specific, why should you hosted in AWS. The first thing is that it is up and running in minutes. Compared to setting up a traditional database on your own on-prem server or an EC2 instance, if you use the managed RDS service that is provided by AWS, you can easily create your database within a couple of minutes and be ready to use it for any use case that you have. Another good functionality is that it has inbuilt failover cap capabilities. It has automated backups. For example, um, you can set the duration that after every 24 hours, you want to take one backup or whatever the time duration you guys wish to be according to you, your use case, you can take those backups. It provides multi-AZ support, that is multi-availability zone support, that is you can have primary databases and you can also have your secondary database. Um, another good functionality is auto scaling. Now you may have initially set up a 100 uh, GB SSD for your um, relational database, but what if you are at 80 GB, you're using 80 GB, that's 80% capacity, then AWS will automatically auto scale your storage capacity for your RDS instance to manage that. And another really cool functionality that I really like is called read replicas. We will be diving into more details about what are read replicas, but this is a really good functionality. And finally, I just want to take a look into OLTP versus OLAP. Um, this is something that is pretty important that you guys should know and have a good understanding about. Again, if you guys are planning to give an AWS certification, that is the Solution Architect Associate. Um, this is pretty much really important to know because when you're able to put a use case into an OLTP or an OLAP, you will be able to get to know which type of storage slash database you need to use. So first let's go over OLTP. It basically stands for Online Transaction Processing. It says that it processes data from transactions in real time. Now, real time transactions would be, you know, your banking transactions, you're depositing money, you're withdrawing money, or it could be booking systems, you know, where you're booking, um, you know, flight tickets, movie concerts, or anything like that. And it's all about data processing and completely uh, completing large number of small transactions. So again, large number of small transactions, this could also be related to your banking transactions, wherein a lot of deposits are coming in and a lot of withdrawals are going out. Now you can see the, the uh, deposit is a small transaction, but multiple deposits, hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of deposits become a large number of small transactions. Now let's come to OLA. AP, this stands for Online Analytical Processing. You uh, process complex queries to analyze historical data. So if you have any use case that wants to analyze historical data, this would come under the OLAP category. It basically is used for profit and loss forecasting, sales forecasting, and much, much more. So if you want to forecast something, it could be weather, it could be sales, it could be profit and loss or anything exact, you would, that such use case would fall under OLAP. 
And finally, it's all about data analysis that is using a large amounts of data. So where you have, you want to, uh, that's where, when you have large amounts of data, that's only when you'll be able to forecast something over there. So hope you guys did get a good understanding related to RDS, what RDS is, what are the different functionalities related to RDS and why should you deploy your um, you know, RDS on the AWS cloud? What is OLTP and OLAP and what are the differences between the two of them? So I hope you guys did like this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like, do subscribe and do comment if you like this video. If there are any other uh, topics out there, please make sure to leave a comment. Uh, hope you guys have a great day ahead. See ya. Take care. Bye-bye.